Hello my friends, today is the day where I finally start to do some Affinity Designer tutorials on my channel. And the first thing I'm going to do is showing you the difference between Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria. And I want to thank all of my patrons who make these videos possible and support me. I'm super thankful for that. Let's get started. So you might know that Affinity Designer is a vector program, but you don't know maybe what vectors are. So I will show you the difference. And at the very beginning, it's kind of similar to Affinity Photo. You click on File and New, and then you select the size, and it gives you this. And this still looks pretty equal. And when we go to Affinity uh, Photo, I have a photo open here. Um, you now see some differences right away. So on the left side, we have a lot more tools and these tools are all specialized on editing photos. You have brushes and you have um, stuff to make pixel selections and all these kind of stuff, a smudging tool, a blurring tool. You have brushes on the right side and all these kind of things that are pixel related, all the filters, stuff like that. When we go back to Affinity Designer, you can see that on the left side, um, there's a fairly limited selection of tools in there because vectors are actually just simple shapes that are combined to create really cool and interesting shapes. So for example, here we have our rectangle tool and we can create a rectangle or maybe don't, let's not create a rectangle. Let's make a circle and I will color this circle in red and then we make a second circle and I will color this sec uh, second circle in blue. Let's take a nice blue. There we go. Okay. And now comes the magic part why vectors are important. Because when I start to zoom in here, you will see that the border between the red and the blue is staying sharp no matter how much I zoom into. And I'm zoomed into the picture so much right now, 55,000% that actually um, the curved outside looks like a straight line. So it's still sharp as you can see because there are no pixels. Vectors are mathematical lines and you can size them in any size. You could print it on the surface on the moon. It's still super sharp on any detail of the vector design. Let's zoom out here again and go back to our picture. You can see here when I start to zoom in very, very soon starts to get super pixelated, looks super strange uh, because these are pixels and they have a finite number of pixels, basically, depending on the resolution of the image. And um, by the way, if you see something like this on the side of a truck or on a print or on the side of a house, stuff like that. What that means is that they forgot to send the high resolution picture you need for that size. And the only thing they printed was the preview that's included in the file. And the preview is of course, not only very small, but also very uh, small resolution. So let's zoom out here again. And you can see when I go to document and resize document, it tells me these are the pixels. And this is the resolution. So if you multiply this number with this number, you get the absolute number of all the pixels that you have inside of this picture. And that's it. If you want to make it bigger, you get a pixelated picture. Not so on the Affinity Designer side because we are working with shapes. Okay, but this is not the only difference and this is not the only reason why you use Affinity Designer because of course you have these kind of shapes also over here in Affinity Photo. As you can see, I can make um, an ellipse with vectors, no problem in here. Uh, one thing that Affinity Photo does not have is artboards and they are really, really cool. And what you can do with them is you click here and then, okay, one thing that's very strange is happening up here. It says sizes document and it gives you iPad sizes and iPhone sizes and Apple watch sizes. I don't know who does vector graphics for Apple watch. I can't imagine it's the, the I don't know, the main target of affinity designer people who buy this kind of software, but this is what is in here. Actually, what should be in here is different paper sizes because vector is mostly used. It's used for screen too, but it's mostly used for um, paper, for print. So you click and drag and it creates an artboard like this. 
And when you look on the lower right side, what you see here, it says transform. It gives you a width in millimeters and a height in millimeters. I think you can change this to inches or the US, um, how do you say, um, numbers? Uh, yeah. What you use over there, <laughs> use that. I think you can change it in the settings. And if you don't know the different sizes of different papers, that's completely okay. You can go on the internet and there is a page that I will link in the video description. And uh, on that page, it calls papersizes.eo. You have all these different kind of sizes and they are all with, uh, like they tell you what they are. So that's really, really useful. And um, so you can go by these numbers. That's very useful. So here, for example, you have these European paper sizes. A4 is what we use for letters. Uh, in the US, you have your own letter size. You can see this is a different size than our size. Our paper, I think, is a little bit bigger uh, than yours. Oh, no, it's a little bit smaller, maybe. I don't know. Anyways, um, you also have stuff like business cards, for example. And you can see here directly that the US and Canada business card has a different size than the European business card. And this can be really important. Uh, for example, uh, when you give a customer a business card, you have these little boxes and you have these little etuis, these like plastic sleeves where you put them in uh, to preserve them, to keep them. Uh, if you have the wrong size of business card because you're in the wrong continent, these might not fit. So that's not a good idea. You ask your customer uh, what kind of business card they want. And if you want to do, if you want to design your own business cards, uh, look out for actually printing them in the actual right size and designing them the right size. So here it's 85 to 55 for the European version. So we can enter this in here, 85 to 55. And the designers will already point out at this point, hey, you can't do that because there is something called a bleed. And the bleed is where uh, the printer is cutting the paper. And so this means that the artboard needs a little bit to be a little bit bigger. And this is absolutely true. You have to go to the website of your printing company and find out what their bleed is because it's different for different companies. And then you add this to the size. So they will tell you the actual size you should put in here. Um, for this. Okay, so it is a little bit bigger and now what we can do is we can take our shapes and we drag them in here. You can see as soon as I drag them in here, they are associated with the artboard and will also be arranged under the artboard. So this gives me a very cool ability to um, to design something in the exact size that we need here. Let's create a second artboard. You can create it anywhere here. You can move it around afterwards. There's no problem with that. And uh, let's give it uh, the paper size, for example. Let's go with A6. That's the size for flyers. So 105 to 148. I don't know if you call them flyers in the US. Uh, this is what you hand out on the street. For example, if you want to advertise a party or something like that and say, hey, this is cool. We have DJ so-and-so and the entry fee is so-and-so. And if you show this, you get a free cocktail when you come in, stuff like that. Uh, they are called flyers. I don't know what you call them. And um, you can see now uh, I can go back here and I can, uh, holding shift, I can, nope, not shift, control, sorry. Holding the control key and dragging, I can just copy these shapes. And you can see again, these will be associated with artboard number two. And you can also rename that. You click double on the name and then I write here BC and then I go to the other one and I call it flyer. And you should really do that because otherwise you're getting lost. You don't know what's going on. So be organized from the very start. And if you know that you have these document sizes and need them on the regular basis, I would suggest you create a document with all the sizes you need and then save it as a master file so you can always right away start with the right artboards, with the right names for the artboards, be super organized. It's a very fast workflow like that. And of course, uh, let's copy this, for example. We can go here, copy, and then can we can switch over to Affinity Designer and we can go paste. And there we have our picture. Let's bring that to the background, for example. You Up here you have these buttons where you can move them back and forth. And you can see that this is also no problem to do that. 
Uh, and also they work together so you can import or you can open the Affinity Designer files in Affinity Photo and vice versa. And we will do that because I want to create tutorials that show how these two programs work together and what kind of a symbiosis they have with each other. Because in some you can do some stuff that you can't do in another. So they are really, really useful when used together. On their own, of course, they are also useful, but together they are like a power team. So uh, that's a very cool thing to have. And uh, you might now wonder, how do I get this artboard out? Because now, where do I get this? So uh, you go up here to File and Export. And it asks you here, Area, Whole Document, which is everything. But you can also go and say, I want only the flyer. And right now I have PDF because when you print, you should export it as a PDF. And you go in here and it says for export, for print, for web, um, all this kind of stuff. So when you print it, you just select print. And this is basically everything you need to do. So I would, as an, if you're not sure what you're doing, just go with this because these settings are great. Just go with PDF for print and you're done. Uh, like I said, you have to be um, sure that the, the paper or the artboard is the right size. So it's a little bit bigger depending on what your print company wants. Uh, but the rest of the settings are pretty cool. Uh, so that's pretty good. Okay. And all the settings are here already set for you. You see um, stuff is on 300 DPI, stuff like that. Uh, so that works very well. And then you can just click on export and you have a PDF that's okay for printing. Uh, of course, another thing you want to look out for is if you use pictures and of course with flyers, you often use pictures, be sure that they are in the right size and the right resolution. So um, you can calculate the resolution. You can also use online uh, to look up uh, what kind of resolution you want uh, or need. Let's go here and say, print size calculator there it gives me um, the thing that I need and you just click on here and then you enter the width and the height um, in this case an inch and it gives you uh, the resolution that you need as uh, like the light the right resolution for that kind of picture so there's a lot of different pages that you can use okay so this was a very short intro into the difference between a vector software and the pixel software, which is um, Affinity Photo. Uh, and I will do tutorials on how to actually use these tools and make some great, cool looking designs. But before I did that, I really wanted you to understand what is the actual difference and why would I use a, a Affinity Designer if I already have Affinity Photo. And by the way, if you're only working with photos and not with vectors and uh, you don't need that. There is no reason to get Affinity Designer. You don't really need that. You can make different sizes of files in here. Uh, I say new and you can select from here. There's also different kind of print ratios here and you just work with different files. So um, if you don't plan to do kind of illustration style things, um, you don't really need that. Okay, so that was the intro for today. Very basic, just a quick overview of what the actual difference are and how to use artboards because I think this is one of the main uh, most useful features of Affinity Designer. And um, in the next video, I will show you how to use Affinity Designer for a cool little project. Okay, thank you very much and see you in the next uh, tutorial. Bye.